Hello artists, welcome back to Meet the Masters. Today our artist is Gustav Klimt. So here's a photo of Gustav Klimt. He was born in 1862 near Vienna, Austria. Here's his birthplace. And if you're wondering where Austria is, here's a map of Europe. So here's Italy, there's that boot, France and Spain. Austria is in the middle of Europe, so it's just north of Italy and south and east of Germany. And that red dot is where Vienna is. Okay, so growing up, Klimt was the second of seven children, and he grew up in a very poor family. He had two brothers who were also artists. Their names were George and Ernst. And when he was 14, he earned a scholarship and he started studying at the Uni University of Applied Arts in Vienna. So here's a photograph of that school. And while he was still in school, he worked with his two brothers, George and Ernst, another friend, and they teamed up with one of their professors and would paint murals for different museums. So here, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name of this museum. They would paint murals for museums and different commissions. So a commission would just be someone pays them to paint murals in their building or palace, museum. And then he was also painting ceilings. So this is a ceiling that he painted at the Berg Theater in Vienna, Austria. Okay, so later on in his life, he meets this woman, Emily Flog, and she's important because they become lifelong friends and they have, her family has a vacation home in Addersea, and that is a small town on, almost on the border with Germany. It's in Austria, but it has a large lake and Klimt really loved the area. He vacationed with them the rest of his life in Addersea, and he's known for two subjects in his life. He loved to paint landscapes and women. So the first landscape he painted were in Addersea, and that was where he spent the bulk of his time painting landscapes. So here's a photograph of him. You'll notice his kind of unique style of dress. He's got kind of like a long robe on and he was a very intense, serious artist maybe. And he would wander the forest in Addersea in his kind of long toga robe. And the locals nicknamed him the forest demon because he was such a serious and interesting person just roaming through the forest. He was probably just taking in the nature for his landscape, but he was quite unique. Okay, so here is a picture of the lake that he painted in Addersea, and you'll notice he loved all the different colors in the lake, and he loved to highlight those. And then here is another painting he did in Addersea of the avenue going up to this hammer castle. And then here is another view of that same castle, but he was looking at it from across the lake. So he looked at it through a telescope and then painted it. And that's why it's pretty flat and there's not a lot of depth. But Klimt was known for painting a lot without depth and dimension. So his paintings were pretty flat. That was his preferred style. Okay, so in 1897, he helped found the Vienna Secession. So the Vienna Secession was a group of artists, he's pictured right here, that did not comply with the traditional way of art and the traditional art scene. And so they banded together so that they could hold their own exhibitions and sell their art on their own without having to comply with the traditional ways of art. All right, so from 1900 on, Klimt becomes known as a painter of women. So each year he would paint at least one large-scale portrait of a woman. 
And here is a very famous one called The Kiss. This is Klimt. This is his friend Emily. And you'll notice there's a lot of gold in this painting. So he painted with oils. And then he would also layer on real gold leaf and silver leaf into his painting. So this is the beginning of his gold phase. Kind of like last year we learned about Picasso and his different blue phases and rose phases. This is his gold phase. And he was inspired to make these paintings with gold leaf by a lot of Byzantine imagery. So when he was traveling through Vienna and Ravenna in Italy, there were a lot of Byzantine mosaics and they have a lot of little gold tiles in there and that was the inspiration for him to use a lot of gold leaf in his painting. Okay so let's talk about his style of art. So there's Art Nouveau and there's Symbolist Art. So Art Nouveau focuses a lot <clears throat> on plants and the form that vines kind of take. So in Art Nouveau <clears throat> You'll see a lot of winding patterns and forms. You'll see a lot of flowers and leaves. And then with symbolist art, you are painting to get an idea or an emotion across, not necessarily just a painting of a grizzly bear, but maybe that grizzly bear represents power and you put some hidden symbols into that painting as well that have meaning to you that you want to get across to the viewer. Okay, so here is the Tree of Life. This was also done during his gold phase. And this has a lot of symbol in it. So the Tree of Life is comes up a lot in all kinds of religions as meaning life and growth. You'll notice the Art Nouveau elements, these kind of winding branches. Um, you'll notice there's a, a blackbird here, which represents death because we all live and grow and we all unfortunately have to die at some point. And then there's a man and a woman, another woman over here to represent masculine and feminine uh, elements in life. Okay, so here is a very famous painting called Adila Blockbauer One. So this portrait was commissioned by her husband. Her husband, Frederick, had Klimt paint this portrait. It took four or five years because he was such a perfectionist. But this one is really detailed in that gold leaf. So it's also symbolist in that you've got this human here, but then surrounding her is kind of this unearthly gold. And so it kind of elevates her to almost like a religious icon or a saint. Um, there's also lots of symbols throughout with the eyes, triangles, the almonds, there's eggs, and those all are represented, represent femininity. If you look close over here, you can see there's her initials, A and B, and then her initials are also around the rest of the painting. So a lot of symbolism in this one. And this one is very interesting because after Adila passed away, the Nazis invaded Austria, and unfortunately, they looted, they stole a lot of art. So they made accusations against her husband, Frederick, accusing him of tax evasion, false crimes that he didn't commit. But they took his sugar factory and his paintings and his art, and this was one of them. And so he passed away, but before he did that, he revised his will so that his nieces would get anything that belonged to him. And it took years and years, and it wasn't until... 2005, that the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that this painting should be returned to his niece, um, who is now living in the United States. And so it was returned, and now it is on display at the Noya Gallery in New York City.
So a pretty storied portrait. They made a film about this one. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Okay, so here is the second portrait that he made of Adila. And this one's quite different, but there's a lot of Art Nouveau in there and a lot of flowers and leaves and shapes there. And then again, another portrait of a woman of Eugenia. And you can see the art, or sorry, the gold in the background, a lot of those flowers that were popular with the Art Nouveau style. And then here's um, one last portrait of a woman. So again, noted for his landscapes and his portraits of women. Okay, so let's get into our quiz and see if you are paying attention. What is symbolism in art? A, when art reflects an idea or emotion instead of the real world. B, when art has musical symbols. Or C, when art is cut into four pieces and rearranged. Good, you got it. It was A. So again, the symbolism is reflecting an idea, an emotion, and Sometimes it does look like real life, but there are symbol symbolist attributes and sometimes just plain old symbols right in the painting. Okay, what nickname did the people of Addersea give to Klimt? A, Toga Tony, B, Forrest Seaman, or C, Uncle Nutsy? You're right, C, Forrest Seaman. Good job. All right, last question. What was the name of Klimt's art movement? A, painters with attitudes, B, artists for architecture, or C, the Vienna Secession? Right, the Vienna Secession. And they grouped together to kind of get away from that establishment and be able to have their own exhibitions, without which Klimt may not have been able to have that gold period and do those really unique paintings and portraits of women that were so popular and are still so popular today. Okay, so that was a little bit about Gustav Klimt. I thought I'd finish with a picture of him with one of his cats. He was an eccentric individual, as we talked about before, and he would always have between eight and ten cats that would just roam around his studio. So kind of a fun, interesting guy. I hope you learned a little something new and we will get together and work with foil and make our own art together. So I can't wait to see you soon. Bye.